Hey everyone! So this tutorial is going to explain how I put together View C or the Gwen view from the Children's Corner Bishop pattern. Gwen has angel sleeves although you could make this with smock sleeves. Gwen opens completely in the back so there's no placket. Alright so let's get started. You'll have a back pattern piece that's so two pieces that are cut on the selvage edge according to the pattern but this doesn't have to be the case. Also this is my first time making this particular pattern and if I were to do it over I would end up adding another inch and a half to that selvage edge. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'll list the time here where you can fast forward to for a better explanation. Then you'll have one front piece cut on the fold. As with any bishop, try to cut the straight part of the sleeve seam as straight as possible until it curves. This will make sure that your pleats are consistent. And then two sleeve pieces. Again, cut these as precisely as possible. Finally, enough bias strip for the neckline and under each armhole. I don't measure these, I just cut more than I'm going to need and I trim them down later. The neckline bias is a 2 inches wide and the armholes are an inch and a half wide. Starting with the sleeves, you'll want to finish that raw edge first. You can either fold this under twice to do a very small hem or do a rolled hem with your serger or put some lace on it. Those are basically the options that you have at hand. I decided to put some Swiss embroidered lace. You can do this with a zigzag stitch. I'll link a video below explaining how to add lace to, you know, flat lace to flat fabric. And then you can iron the seam toward the sleeve, which would be away from the lace. Then go back over it with a very small straight stitch to hold the seam in place. You don't have to do that part, but if you don't, the seam can move back and forth. It just makes it a little neater. Once you have your sleeves treatment done with that raw edge, you can piece the sleeves together with the front of the dress. I do this using a very tiny French seams, and I have a video on how to do a French seam that I'll link below, but the gist is, is that you sew wrong sides together about three quarters of an inch, sorry, about three eighths of an inch from the raw edge in this case. Trim the seam very close to the stitches since this is going to be going through a pleater. And then iron that seam towards the dress front. Then iron the seam on top of itself and sew just past the raw edges. This will create a very tiny French seam, say about an eighth of an inch or so. If you don't want to use French seams for your construction, you can do a tiny rolled hem on your serger or a very tiny zigzag on your machine if you don't have a serger. So now we can move on to the pleating. I always, always roll my work onto a dowel. It makes things so much easier going through the pleater. You don't have to keep the fabric taut while you're doing this, but keeping that raw edge in line is important. After referencing the pattern, I set my pleater up with 12 half spaces. I use orange thread in all of the needles except for the last two. I put white thread in these since the seam allowance at the neckline is a half inch. Using white thread takes the pressure off of having to pull those threads out later since they aren't really going to be visible. And then just start to pleat the fabric. As long as your sleeve seams are tiny enough, it should go through the pleater with no issues. I'm using Imperial Broadcloth here, which is not exactly a lightweight fabric by any means, and mine didn't give me any issues. Now the seams do show a bit more than they would on a lightweight fabric, which is kind of the nature of the beast, but they don't give me any issues going through my pleater. So I pull it out of the pleater making sure to have plenty of thread on either side. I love using this blocking board and I'll link it below. I know it's a little bit on the pricey side, but it is so useful. First take out about an inch worth of pleats on each side of the back pieces, then pin one back piece onto the board and then the other one and then just go around the neckline matching the seams up to your board. The board has labeled where the center front and each sleeve seam should go. Then tie the threads on one side of the back together in groups of two or three. Once these threads have been knotted you can pull the other side of the threads to start getting the dress to lay flat. Once you have all the threads taut and the dress is laying flat, then readjust your neckline. 
Now you can use more pins. It's kind of a give and take process of balancing out the thread tautness and the dress flatness, if that makes sense. So when all of that is done, tie the threads off at the other side of the dress. Again, in groups of twos or threes. You can give all of those threads a trimming and then your dress should look like this. At this point, many people prefer to do the smocking. I prefer smocking on a finished garment though. So I'm going to continue with the construction and save all of my hand sewing for later on. So next I join the sides using French seams. These don't need to be super tiny. Mine are about a quarter of an inch finished. And I press the finished seams towards the back of the dress. Then take a piece of bias for the sleeve and turn under the sides. And then fold the bias strip in half and iron all of these folds in place. You'll want to sew them about an inch into the sleeve on each side if that makes sense. Like up into the sleeve. And try to place your needle right in line with the previous stitches from the sleeve seam. I know this can get tricky but go slow and be patient. And it will eventually work itself out. Just do a little bit at a time. Trim anything that might be poking out afterwards. The other side of the bias strip will be sewn in place by hand later on. Okay, so this is the part I was referencing at the beginning. To me, the center back overlap space that's given by the pattern isn't big enough to place a button on it comfortably. So, you can either cut your back pattern pieces with another inch and a half or so on that edge, or you can sew a strip on each side. Since this is my first time making this particular pattern and I didn't realize the size issue, I had to sew another strip on each side. The strip is an inch and a half wide, and I'm turning a quarter of an inch of the raw edge under the side and sewing that down. Then putting right side together, I'm joining that strip to the back of the dress with a quarter of an inch seam. And so this is what it looks like finished. And I repeat the same thing to the other back side. Then it's come to putting on the neck binding. This is the bias strip that is two inches wide. I fold that in half lengthwise and iron it. Since the fabric is on the thicker side and the pleats are closer together, I'm just going to use a combination of my sew line pin, which I'll link below, with straight pins to hold the neck binding in place as it's being sewn. If the fabric was lightweight, then I would take the time to back smock where I was going to machine stitch to hold those pleats in place. But since my fabric has some body to it and the pleats are closer together, I can get away with the sew line pin. A side note, that sew line pin doesn't harm your machine and it irons right off. It's not as good as back smocking for lighter weight fabrics, but it is so much more convenient, so I use it when I can. Then I sew the neck binding to the dress with right sides together and the pleat side up so I can see what's going on with those pleats as I'm sewing. I also use a stitch just a bit on the longer side, say a 2.5 for my machine. And when you're done, your pleat should be in line like this. Nothing slanted or squished. Then you can trim off the excess just enough so when you fold that neck binding over, the edge meets the stitches. Okay, so going back to these strips, if you went this route, you may want to add some interfacing. I added a one inch strip to each side of baby interfacing, which I will link below. It's not necessary to do this, but it, here I'm showing that the left side has interfacing and the right side doesn't and you can see how much nicer the left side falls than the right. So moving on to the hem. I first turn it up about a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I turn it up four inches. I do this by using a ruler, putting a pin at four inches and moving over a little ways and putting another pin at four inches. And then I just iron to connect that distance and I figure that that's accurate enough. Now it's time for the hand stitching. I'll link below how I hand stitch the neck binding in place. The same concept applies to the hem, but there's just no machine stitches to attach to. Um, so you just go through the strands of the fabric instead. The sleeve binding is done the same way as the neck binding. Just keep going through those stitches and once you pull the thread taut, things should lie right into place. And this is what my arm binding looks like when it's finished. You can see it lays very nice and neat, and it's neat on both sides, and it just kind of goes in line with the previous stitches of the sleeve seam. 
Okay, so we are really, really close to being done at this point. Just got to close up that back. I decided to go with machine buttonholes for this dress. You can do hand buttonholes if you'd like, and I'll link my video below explaining how to do those. Or you could just go with snaps. I'm using this little tool, linked below, to place my buttonholes. I decided that six buttons would look better than five, so I went ahead with that and used a water-soluble marker to mark the positions. This tool also has a depth marked on the edges, so you can use that to keep the buttonholes in line with each other, which is pretty handy. Once you have your buttonholes marked, go ahead and sew those to the dress. Then I spray some water to remove the marker ink. On the back side of the buttonhole, I put fray check on the whole buttonhole. But on the right side of the buttonhole, I just do a tiny bit on the tabs and down the middle where that's going to be cut on the fabric. And here I'm showing the difference between using the interfacing and not. Both buttonholes here are done with two layers of fabric, but you can see how the buttonhole on the left lays nicer than the one on the right. It's a small detail, but you know, those things to me make a difference. So here's the finished garment. The colors are a bit lighter than my usual garments, but I think it's pretty adorable. I used some seed beads on the smocking too. One more thing to mention, I didn't put a machine buttonhole at the top of the dress since my machine would get stuck in all that smocking and it would just be one hot mess of thread and a huge headache. So instead I have a mock button. Basically I sewed a button to the right side of the dress and I'll have a snap on the underside to hold the dress closed. Now I'm currently out of snaps, but you can just use your imagination instead of this pen. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or email me. Facebook has been getting more and more frustrating to use, so I hardly check it and I do apologize if I've missed your messages lately. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.